with that technical interlude, we will now <coughs> <laughs> proceed to uh, a, uh, a brief paper by Dr. Peter Millman, who will describe to us uh, the early work that was done on meteor astronomy in Canada. You see, it turns out that not only do we have anniversaries in radio astronomy as such, but uh, we also have the 40th anniversary this year of the first meteor radar in Canada and the 30th anniversary of the Spring Hill Meteor Observatory. So, Peter, perhaps you could tell us briefly about these circumstances. <coughs> I think I need this. I better it's, put it on. It's not a, it's it's just for the recording upstairs. Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, the story of, uh, oh, incidentally, my friends, many of them, in radio astronomy, don't consider radar astronomy as part of radio astronomy. I beg to differ. I've always considered it part of radio astronomy. It may be a poor cousin, but we're definitely related. Uh, interestingly enough, the story I have goes back to the same year Art Covington mentioned, 1943. I spent six years during the war in air crew of the Royal Canadian Air Force. And in 1943, I was overseas as the Canadian liaison officer for operational research for the Canadian Air Force. My duty included attending several high-level committees for the defense of Britain. And these were very interesting. I was the only Canadian on these committees. And the reason I was on them was, as a lowly squadron leader was uh, so that uh, Canada would get the minutes of these meetings. One of them was chaired by Omen Salant, and he was in charge of the Army operational research, the British Army, not Canadian Army. Two uh, members of this committee were Drs. Hay and Dr. Stewart. And after one of the committee meetings, they said, you know, we're working with the anti-aircraft radar over in Richmond Park, and we get all sorts of echoes on this radar. At that time, of course, this was top secret material, and we'd like you to come and look at them. We have an idea those must be meteors. And so I went over with them, watched in those days. The anti-aircraft was very active in London. It was the days of the raids on London. And I looked at them, and I said, well, I'd say definitely they're meteors. They looked to me like meteors. Well, that was a brief interlude in very heavy war work. And I feel like growth about secrecy. I have no use for secrecy in fundamental science. However, came back, was discharged from the Air Force in 1946, July. And that fall, we had a very fine display of meteors, the famous Jacobinian meteor shower of 1946, October. And then, again, uh, we had the visit of Sir Edward Appleton. And he gave a lecture at the same visit that Art mentioned. He gave a lecture in the council here. And both McKinley and I were at this lecture. Incidentally, McKinley was a graduate student at the time I was on the staff at the University of Toronto. And so he talked about the use the English astronomers had made of wartime radar. They'd converted it and used it on the Jacobinid shower. In the meantime, I'd been doing optical observations with our optical equipment at the Dominion Observatory, where I was after my Air Force experience. And the results they got on the Jacobina shower were so striking. And Hay and Stewart had one of what I consider the best papers on this shower. So I went to McKinley. And I said, look, right after the lecture, in fact, we were just still there. I said, look, I've been doing optical work on meteors, and you were head of the meteor research section. Why don't we get together and do a combined program? And McKinley bit at that like a fish biting a reel or a fly. And he said, sure, that's a dandy idea. He's, and he went into it. And I'd like here to pay tribute to my close friend, Don McKinley, because I've never worked with anybody that was so close and I consider so highly as McKinley. I'm only sorry he's not here uh, to help me give this presentation. 
He was responsible for the efficiency and the success of our, the radar part of our combined meteor program. Well, I've only a few minutes to speak, and so I didn't want to take a lot of time with giving you many details. We made our first radar observations in August of 1947. Our first paper was published in Nature. It was dated December the 8th of 47. It appeared in the February 21st issue of Nature. Since time is short, I've prepared a copy of that paper from Nature. It's the historical paper on our radar program, or it's much out of tribute to McKinley. It's by Milman, McKinley, and Berland. McKinley has passed on. I'm sorry to say that Mim Berlin is in the Pearly home, uh, not very mobile, in a wheelchair, but I intend to go to see her right after this meeting and show her what I handed out, because she is the third author of our first paper. She looked after organizing the visual observers, and I looked after the photographic equipment at that first. We converted the wartime radar of the National Research Council to our observations. And then we carried on. IGY came, al IGY came along, as Art mentioned. We decided Canadian contribution to the IGY should, IGY should be a meteor observatory. And so we built the Spring Hill Meteor Observatory. And the first observations were made 40 years ago. The first observations at Spring Hill and the official opening of Spring Hill was 30 years ago. So we filled in 50, 40, 30, and 20. And just a very personal comment, I have another personal, strictly personal anniversary. My first professional job in astronomy was 60 years ago. I spent the summer of 1927 working under Jack Plaskett and Harry Plaskett at, and Pierce, Jack, Jack Pierce, at the Dominion Astrophysical Observatory in Victoria. So we have 60, 50, 40, 30, 20 today. Uh, but that first one is a very personal one. Uh, I've also prepared a little handout also. The two are at the end of the table. I have plenty for everybody. Those who would like to take an extra one, I don't want everybody to take an extra one, but I think I've got about 60 copies there. And so please be, feel free to take them. This one, I'd better, I had no time, I only had a week to prepare this. So uh, this one shows an illustration of our first uh, observing station, visual observing station. McKinley and myself are standing there at the beginning. That was in 1947. And then the second picture shows our, an air view of our Spring Hill Observatory, 40 acres in a site that was very carefully chosen after six months of work trying to find the best site near Ottawa, 25 miles south of Ottawa. And I reproduced this from our opening invitation. This is the plan of the observatory and shows the various parts of the observatory. A sad comment. On the 20th of November, 1986, I had the rather traumatic duty of a sort of an unofficial official closing of the observatory. It was our last run of the high power meteor radar the low power meteor radar, and it is now up for sale in public assets. And the 40 acres and all the buildings and everything is just gone. I don't know whether it's been sold yet or not. In fact, I don't know whether I want to know. But that is the end of our 40 year program of meteor radar. I'll just say two words about some of the things we accomplished. Our thrust in establishing this program was to do something that hadn't been done elsewhere. The English had already made observations. The Americans were just starting theirs. There, were further, there was further work done at Stanford University out in California later. But since we had expertise in both the optical, the visual, and the radar, I felt it was very important to calibrate over a, a century and a half of meteor observation, which was primarily visual with the new instrumental techniques. And so right from the start, we had a professional team of visual observers, anywhere from 15 to 24 cameras operating, mostly spectrographic 
to get the spectra of meteors. High power radar, later both high power and patrol radar. And as soon as image intensification, electronic image intensification came in, we applied that also. We used, started with image orthocons with the cooperation of the Dudley Observatory in Albany and um, later SEC and SIT Vidicon equipment, which multiplied our uh, photog photography of spectra, our recording of spectra, from 100 or 200 to thousands. So uh, we didn't get uh, thousands as a world total of spectra, but uh, we had up to nearly a thousand records from our own program. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I think that uh, covers the main. Oh, yes, we did use a, Lear, a NASA Lear jet one time to observe it 41,000 feet when it was cloudy and recorded the same meteors from the ground with our radars. And we also collected 100 and, uh, 250,000 uh, visual observations from other stations, in addition to uh, 45 visual observations, 45,000 visual observations at our own station in spring. Metcalf Road. The, the picture Art showed of Metcalf Road was where we started. And, and this first illustration in here is Metcalf Road. This is a little difficult to get off. There we are. Fine. Thank you very much, Peter.